Pastor Dave says he's going to be starting a new enterprise. I don't know what he's doing. Closed. Pastor Dave? I'm sorry, we're closed. What do you mean we're closed? This is a church. Can't you read the sign? It says closed. Pastor Dave, just open the door. What are you doing? Um, something. Uh, what is your new enterprise? Well, come on in. Okay. Welcome to the Wander Lumber Company. A lumber company? This is a church, Pastor Dave. Well, in this new enterprise that I was doing, you know, it takes money to to get on your feet and get going, and I just didn't have all of the resources. And so this is a room that's not used for very much anyway, so I thought I would start here and I could really branch out. I, I'm a little curious to see where you're going with all of this. A Wander Lumber Company, like what is Wander Lumber, what does that mean together? Why is that even together? Wander Lumber Company. I don't, I don't understand. You're gonna have to explain to me. Okay, have a seat and I'll tell you. So, welcome everybody to the opening of the Wander Lumber Company. And just like Miss Anya, I know you're wondering, what is the Wander Lumber Company? Well, you see, it was like this. When I was a boy, every year for two weeks, we would go to Tennessee to visit my dad's parents, my grandparents, and they used to live out in the middle of nowhere. I used to call it the house on the haunted hill because there was you know, not much electricity and outdoor bathrooms and nobody else around for miles. And then they finally moved into the city when they got older and boy, it was the big time for them. They had indoor plumbing and it was really great. And we would go there and every morning about 10 o'clock, my grandfather would disappear. And so one day I asked my grandmother, I says, hey, where does Pappy go every day at 10 o'clock? And she looked at me and she says, well, he goes to work. I go, work? Dad said you guys were retired. That's why you moved into the city. What do you mean he goes to work? She goes, well, he works for the Wander Lumber Company. I go, the Wander Lumber Company? What's that? To which she replies, well, he wanders up one street and he lumbers down another until he finally finds his way home. Now, I've been thinking about that. And I thought, now isn't that a lot like a lot of Christians today? We find ourselves just kind of meandering through life, going in no general direction, with no real purpose on how to grow and how to mature in Christ, and yet we know that someday we'll find our way home. We go to work, we come home. We eat, we sleep. We get up the next day, and the whole process starts over again. You know, Christian life has to have more meaning than this. So I thought, who in the Bible portrays these same characteristics and face the same struggles that we do in our journey through life? And I thought of Abraham. Yeah, Abraham. Listen to what the writer of Hebrews tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 8. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed by going out to a place 
which he was to receive for an inheritance, and he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he lived as an alien in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs of the same promise. For he was looking for the city, which has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Do you get that? God came to Abraham one day and said, Hey, I'm going to make of you a great nation. And all of the nations of the world are going to be blessed. And I'm going to give you a, a land, and, and it will be for all of your posterity through all of the ages. And Abraham said, boy, Lord, this is really good. This is great. Where is it? And God said, start walking. And he did. Now, Abraham stands out as one of the greatest Old Testament examples for New Testament Christians. In the midst of the Old Testament greats, Abraham emerges as a man who desired more than anything else to discover to do God's will. But Abraham was also a man who suffered all the ambivalent feelings and mixed emotions that every Christian faces on their journey. Though his great desire was to obey God, sometimes he disobeyed. He wanted to trust God, and yet sometimes he really doubted. Sometimes he stepped boldly out by faith, and at other times he drew back in fear. His motives were usually right, but sometimes he used the wrong methods. And on one occasion he did something so dumb that it affected the course of human history. And although Sarah, his wife, was generally loyal to him, at times she made it difficult for Abraham to obey God completely. Now, guys, before you start looking at your wife and saying, see, see, it's your fault, listen. You're still responsible. You know, Abraham stands out in Scripture as a normal human being. He messed up just like all of us. But his direction was always one way. And in perspective, his pilgrimage stands out dramatically as an example to us all. From Abraham's life story, we're going to have principles that will assist us to discover and to do God's will. His Old Testament journey is alive with New Testament truth. And so we hope every week you will join us at the Wander Lumber Company so we can quit wandering up one side of the street and lumbering down the next, wondering what God has for us and get on the move and look for that same city that Abraham was looking for. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for the life of Abraham. And we thank you for how he is a great example to us that with all of the twists and turns of life, going from one place to another place, obeying at times, not obeying at times, he became the father of our salvation. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Miss Sonia, that's the story of the Wander Lumber Company. Have a good night and get out. We're closed. <laughs>